Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an indexing table with a robot. To get started, let's go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, I'll expand Workpiece Positioners, click Visual Components, and then add this item here called Indexing Table to the 3D world. Now, most indexing table type components are modeled like this, so if I directly select a component in the 3D world, I turn on the Interact command, Notice that the top platform of the component is interactive, so if I hold the left mouse button, notice I'm now rotating the table. Now the indexing of this table is handled using signals, so I'll go to the Show group, select the Signals checkbox here, and notice the table has two signals, one called Index Signal and one called Ready Signal. Now whenever you want the table to rotate, you need to send a value to this signal called Index Signal, so if the value is true or false, the table will move. Now once the table is finished moving, it will then set the value of this ready signal. Now you can control how much the table indexes using its component properties, which you can see here in the component properties panel. So you can index a table relative to the current value of its joint, or you can give it an absolute value. Now when that index signal value is true, this property value will be used, and when the index signal value is false, this value will be used and the amount of time it takes the table to move to one of these values is set with this property here called indexing time. Let's see how this works, so I'm actually going to set index back to relative and now let's add a robot to the 3D world, so in the eCatalog panel I'll expand robots, click visual components and I'll add a generic articulated robot to my layout but you could add any robot you want and notice here the inputs and outputs of the robot, so let's wire those to our indexing table let's wire the index signal as an output we want the robot to send out a signal, uh, sorry, send out a value when we want it to index the table. So let's map this to signal 100 in the robot. Let's now wire the ready signal as an input to the robot and set that signal to be signal 101. Let's now program the robots. So on the show group, I'm going to clear the signals checkbox to hide the editors. I'll then go to the program tab. You can use the jog command to select the robot in the 3D world. And now in the program editor panel, I'm working in the main routine of the robot. Let's send out a signal to index the table, so I'll add a set binary output statement. And the output port in the statement properties panel, we wire the index signal to port 100 in the robot. And let's start by sending out a true value, so I'll select the output value checkbox here. Let's then wait for the table to finish rotating, so I'll add a wait for binary input statement. I'll now go to the statement properties panel and that ready signal was wired to port 101 in the robot and since we sent out a true value to index the table we have to wait for an index value of true as well and I'm also going to select this wait trigger checkbox here so every time there's an event happening like a signal change event I'm then going to evaluate the value of that input port of 101 so now if I run the simulation the table moves the robot waits for the table to stop moving and then the program stops and the simulation also stops now this might be hard to see since we don't have any parts on the index table, so I'm going to go back to the Home tab, and in my eCatalog panel I'll just scroll up, and under Models by Type I'll click this Smart Collection called Products and Containers, and I'll do a quick search for a cylinder, and I'll use this item here, so I'll drag it into my layout. Notice this also resets the simulation, so whenever you add a new component to your layout the simulation will reset. Let's now snap the cylinder to one of these black plates here. So I'm going to press the shift key and hold down. And now when I point at the bottom of the cylinder, notice I can pick one of its geometry points there. So I'm going to hold on left mouse button. And now I can drag the cylinder anywhere I want to in the 3D world. So let's actually drag it here to the face center of this plate. I'll let go and zoom out. And I'm going to press the escape key to exit out of that shortcut command I was using. Now if I was to move the index table, you can notice that if I select it here and interact with it, that the cylinder is not attached to it, so it's you know it's not moving with it. So let's reset, and now I will select the cylinder again. I'll go to the hierarchy group, and now use the attach command to attach the cylinder to the node of the indexing table that's supposed to move, so this platform here. So if I click, and now if I select the indexing table again, and use the interact command, notice that the cylinder is now moving with it. So if I reset and run the simulation, notice that, yep, we can now see how the table is indexing and now let's actually move the table back to where it was before, so we'll send out a false value to index. So I'll go to the program tab, use the jog command to select the robot, 
And after we wait for the table to stop moving, let's do a delay. So I'll select the wait statement and then add a delay of two seconds. And let's go ahead and copy these two statements here. So I'll select the set statement first. I'll hold on the control key and add the wait statement to my selection. I'll right click and click copy. I'll then select my delay statement right click and click paste so I inserted those copied statements after the delay and now we're going to send out a false value so I'll select the set output statement here I'll then clear the output value checkbox in the statement properties panel so we're sending the index signal in the table to be false so we have to wait for a false value to know when it's finished moving so we'll go back to the program editor panel I'll select that wait statement there and right now it's set to true so we need to make the input value be false that's what we're listening for and then let's reset and see how this works. So the part will move here and then we should expect the part to move back to where it was before. So after the delay the table moves back and yep it stops where it was supposed to. Let's now see how this works when you're using an absolute index value for the joint of the table. So if I reset and go back to the home tab and then select the index table let's go to those properties in the component properties panel for index angle on true so right now the index is set to relative to the current joint so let's set this to be absolute and let's say that when we send out a false value we want to go to uh, let's do negative 60 so if I run the simulation this is 60 degrees for the joint of the table but now negative 60 is all the way back here so that's the difference between relative and absolute so if we want to test this further let's actually do a negative angle of negative 300 and see how that works. So if I reset, run the simulation again, table moves that part up, then it waits, and then it moves it all the way back there to where it was before. So there's a good example of absolute, and you can notice the index time set how fast that joint had to move with the indexing limits we set on it. So let's go and reset. Now what you want to do, if you want to have a good example of indexing, you could go ahead and build this layout using a conveyor and a feeder and a sensor and then kind of just keep on putting parts on this table. So let's do that now. I will delete this cylinder. I'll then go to my E catalog panel and select feeders under models by type. Let's add a basic feeder. Now let's add and connect a conveyor to this interface in the feeder. So I will expand conveyors. Click visual components. Let's add this first conveyor item here. So I'll drag that into my layout. I'll then use the PMP command to plug the conveyor into the feeder. And the feeder and conveyor are a bit too wide, so I'll hold down the control key and add the feeder to my selection. I'll then go to the component properties panel, and they have a shared property of conveyor width, so let's set that to be 200. And let's now select the conveyor and set it to be a conveyor type of belt. And zoom in just a bit. Let's now add a conveyor sensor, so when a part reaches the sensor, it will send out a signal to the robot to pick up the part and then place it on the table. So on the e-catalog panel, I'll pick processors, and let's add a conveyor sensor, so I'll drag this item into my layout. I'll then use the PMP command to attach the sensor to the path of the conveyor, so the sensor is connected to the conveyor but attached to its path, which you can see here by this blue arrow. So when I interact, or I'm sorry, when I move the sensor, notice that it's still connected to the conveyor but it's just at a different distance along its path. So let's move the sensor right about there. And it seems that the sensor and conveyor are a bit too close to the robot, so let's go ahead and select the feeder. I'll hold down the control key and add the conveyor to my selection. And now since the sensor is attached to the conveyor, it moves with it. And let's just move these components over here. And I think the table's also a bit too close to the robot, so I'll select the index table and just move it over here. And now let's wire the inputs of the sensor to the robot, so I will select the sensor. I'll then go to the show group and select the signals checkbox and let's expand the inputs and outputs of the robot and I'll wire that sensor boolean signal as an input and now let's change that to be signal 102 and now let's go to the component properties panel and we can see when the sensor is triggered it's doing nothing so let's actually set it to stop apart and let's go and hide these signal editors so I'll go to the show group and clear the signals checkbox I'll then go to the program tab and let's now program the robot to pick up a part and place it on the index table and then send out that signal value to rotate the table in this direction here. So in the main routine of the robot, let's go ahead and get rid of all these statements. So I'll select them all and delete. Let's now wait for a signal to be received from the sensor, which was mapped to signal 102. We'll use that input value of true, but I'm not going to use the wait for trigger. 
So sometimes a component will reach the sensor before the robot has time to know that that event took place. So in this case, we're going to leave this checkbox not selected. And after that part has reached the sensor, let's add a halt statement. And I'll reset and run the simulation again. And let's just speed it up a bit. Notice the component has reached the sensor, and now the simulation stopped. Let's now use the jog command in this move tool. So we'll point at this pink torus or donut here. Notice I can now move the robot or snap it to a point on a component. So let's zoom in on the cylinder here. And let's snap the robot right there to that location, that top face of the cylinder. Let's now teach us as our pick position. So after the halt statement, we'll add a linear motion statement. I'm going to send out a signal action of grasp, which is mapped to the first tool frame of the robot by default. So that output value is 1. I'll select the output value to be true, so that will signal a grasp action. We'll then lift up, and that will be my retract position and my approach position. And we want to make our approach position first, so let's move that statement before we go down to pick up the part. Then signal the action and pick back up. Let's now move the halt statement after this. And reset and see the robot pick up that part. There we go. Let's now move the part over here to this part of the indexing table, this plate here. So let's use the move tool real quick. And now we'll use that same command again. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'll now point at the bottom part of the cylinder, one of this geometry here. And I'll hold on the left mouse button. And notice now that I'm jogging the robot, I can move the part and the robot together. So let's now move the robot to place the part at this location here. I'll press the escape key to exit out of the shortcut command. And let's now teach us as the place position. So after the halt statement, let's add a linear motion statement. I'll add a set binary output statement to signal a release action using signal 1 or tool 1 in the robot. So we're not going to select the output value checkbox here. We'll then lift back up, teach us as our retract position and approach position, and we'll make that point to point motion statement for P6 to be before we go down to place the part. Then the robot will go down, release the component, and move back up. So let's add our halt statement after that. And now after the robot does that, we want to index the table. So let's add a set binary output statement. And we're going to signal to signal 100 in the robot to that index signal of the table. And we're going to use a true value, so I'll select the output value here. And then we have to wait for a true value at the ready signal, so I'll add a wait for binary input statement, which was mapped to signal 101 in the robot. The input value is going to be true, and in this case I am going to wait for that signal event, so I will select the wait trigger checkbox. Let's now test. So I'm going to reset the simulation. I'm not going to get rid of the halt statement quite yet. I just want to step to the robot first picking and placing the part and then see the table index. So let's get a better view for you. And run the simulation and enjoy the show. The robot should pick up that part. So far so good. Place the part. And now let's go ahead and continue running the simulation to see the table move. And yep, it moves. And the robot waits. Great. Let's stop the simulation, and let's now have the robot repeat this task, you know, a couple times. So I'm going to reset the simulation. I'm now going to copy my main routine. So in the subprograms pane here, this toolbar, I'm going to click the command called copy sequence, and it copied the main sequence for me, so let's rename it. So just click the name to rename it. And let's rename this to be pick place part index. Let's now call this in our main routine, so I'll click the main routine, and let's get rid of these all these statements here. So I'll select the first statement, hold down the shift key, and select the last statement, so now I have everything selected. And now I'm going to press the delete key, and now let's add a call sequence statement to our subroutine called pick place part index. And how many times do we want to call this? Well, instead of running a while loop, let's go ahead and reset the simulation, select the robot. And in the component properties, let's go to the executor tab. And I'm going to select this checkbox here called is looping. So the robot will just loop its program while the simulation is running. So let's run the simulation again. See how this works. There we go. And we actually can get rid of that halt statement. Sorry. Let's delete that from the robot's program. And run the simulation again. So let's enjoy the show once again. Robot picks and places the part, the table indexes, and let's see the robot do it again. And the table did not rotate, so let's actually stop the simulation. 
And if I remember correctly, we actually are indexing using an absolute value. So if I select the index table in the 3D world, we can see, yep, in the component properties panel, we have it set to absolute. So that's why the table didn't move. So it's actually set index to be relative. And I'm going to leave this in the video so you know how to work around this problem as well. So let's reset and run the simulation again. And we should see the magic this time. So the robot picks the part, places it. And now it places the part again. And the table keeps on indexing. Show me one more time. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. One more time as well. Yes, awesome. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, you can visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.